Let's see the journal. We are the screaming in the background. Let's just say I know where one choice leads us. I don't know where the other one will. Furious, paranoid, and trapped in the mansion with people he barely knew, Luke Wright threatened to take them down with him. Luckily, before the hysterical man could harm anyone. Hmm. So I, I kind of on the the letter doesn't actually do anything. It's just a vessel, while the mansion clearly harbors something. Yeah, but I'm like, how are they gonna get out though? That's my concern. Mm. All right. What do you What do you think, Kimei? Burn the mansion. All right. Burn the mansion. I'm going to regret this. I will. But with these cries growing louder, this has become the easiest decision I have ever made. I'm getting tired of hearing her sobbing. Really, it's just irritating. Isn't she getting tired of it? Also. I like how it's a choice. You know you could just fucking leave the letter in the mansion when you burn it, right? Yeah, like, right. You can do both. Why yeah. not both? <laughs> Actually, true. That's that's a good point. <laughs> Besides, someone has to act fast, think fast, and what else is the root cause of our problems but this place where the letter was found? No need to make things more complicated. Start it here, or I won't end it here. If what Lily has said is true, then there's all the more reason to destroy it. Put an end to this madness before someone thinks of putting this blasted place up in the market. When I get out of this place, I swear I'm suing a bunch of people. Run that estate company to the ground if need be. We spent millions, damn it. Millions. You still own the land, dipshit. Just build a different house. With a sigh and perhaps a heavy heart, I open one of the drawers in my study table. Also, Taking it's not bottle. necessarily the real estate agent's fault. Like, yeah, they sold you the place, and of course they know the history of it, but they were hired to sell it. I yeah. also pretty much know the history of it. Taking a bottle know. of... Yeah. Taking a bottle of liquor out for myself, and then passing it on to every occupant in the room. <laughs> uh, you know, that's not bad luck like <laughs> it's just like, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna get fucking smashed doing it. <laughs> they accept it, but not without a look of protest or a confused glance my way. It does shut them all up, so maybe I've done something good. Look, this isn't the time! <laughs> Even more when I pop the cork off the bottle and pour its contents on the floor. Well, what are you simpletons waiting for? We waste no time dousing the whole room. The smell of alcohol filling the air. If I didn't know any better, I say they're more than eager to set this whole place on fire. And the blaze catches easily in this room when I set it alight, using the blasted paper as kindling. Oh, Thank there it goes. You. With the whole place drenched with wine and all manner of things alcoholic I've been hiding from Hana, the small <laughs> fire soon turns into an inferno. So you guys need a leaf. Okay. In a matter of seconds, we're out the door. It doesn't exactly lead where I'm hoping it will. Oh, I like that there's smoke rising. Oh, Although true. ending up in the kitchen does give us more reason to play like a bunch of pyromaniacs. Fishing the liquor stalks from the cupboards, we also do the same thing we've done to the study. Door after door, every room we've passed. Pouring bottle after bottle of expensive aged liquor and setting everything on fire. Only leaving once the blaze has started in earnest. Oh shit, does that mean they're gonna burn your Hans alive? Oh. So, glad to know that uh, Luke's alcohol problem came in handy. <laughs> when we also... run out of liquor... Go ahead. We simply drop the bottle and take off from many nooks I've stashed one. And there's no lack of it in here. The hard stuff, the shorts, the watered down kind. Gifts from distant relatives, friends, so called friends, you name it, I've made sure there's always one within reach. How many of these things do you keep in this house? 
I always have a few bottles in the bedroom, you know, the parlor and the dining room. You have problems. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> you know. Now, is it this the time to discuss? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm down. <laughs> Oh boy! I I I love how he didn't read what the line said. Yep. But j just by changing two words around, he made it like so much better. <laughs> Turns out it'll be useful now, not to drown out my sorrows, but for this wonder of wonders. Though I suppose I can now say it has also saved my life. <laughs> But there's no time for some introspection now, because with each room we pass and burn, the place also becomes easier to navigate. As if it's slowly writing itself. Returning to what it's supposed to be. Soon we finally find ourselves standing before the main door. The strong odor of burning wood, cloth, and varnish alike wafts from under the door of the rooms we've previously torched, slowly filling the hall with a thick black smoke. The blaze has also started in earnest in every part of the house. I can already feel the heat seeping from the rooms I've set aflame. Listen, Ashton, I know that, like, Johanna's tried to kill you, but you should, like, maybe remember that he's chained up to a bed upstairs and you just set the area on fire. Yeah, uh, he'll be fine. He's a ginger, he'll be fine. <laughs> in a matter of minutes, flames will engulf the whole house. Fittingly, that is when she appears again before us. Watching us from the top of the stairs, while her world goes up in flames around her. However, what catches my eyes is that expression on her face. Not the vile smile I've already grown accustomed to, or the one where her eyes gleam with complete hatred. This one? Forlorn is the only word I can think of to describe it. Please. Can the dead still feel? Can she hear us? Or is that merely another one of her tricks to trap us in this nightmare? Like this, however, she seems almost like the woman she used to be. And I don't waste any time pondering over it. Not with the exit just a few steps away. The doors finally open and through it, I glimpse the world outside. Safety. However, I do turn, if only to see the last of her. A farewell more than anything. Big mistake. Uh -huh. For all her attempts to lure me in, draw me in, her wish is to be with me. She does not stop me when I finally run from this horrid place. Quietly, she disappears. Watching a multi-million pound house burn before me? For some reason, nothing about this bothers me. Maybe it's that one last look on her face that has changed it. Maybe it's what I've seen and heard inside. There is only a calm. A stillness. The same hush that comes after a terrible storm has swept the countryside. And with it, is the sight of the sun rising above the horizon. Ever so slowly, the sky begins to lighten before my eyes. Darkness giving way to the warm morning hues. Soft rays spilling over the vast expanse of Luxbourne's countryside. Nearby, the trees sway and rustle with the breeze. A passing draft that carries even into this room from outside cold enough to make me shiver. The remains of a storm that has passed. In the distance, I can hear the soft chirping of birds, while the rest of the world stirs, wakes. Dawn at last. We are free. Like for real though? Are you though? I, I'm doubting that highly. 
Are we? Despite initial protest, Luke agreed with Isabella Santos. He began dosing the place with alcohol and setting it on fire. Sure enough, as flames slowly engulfed the place, it returned to its original state, freeing them. Outside, at the first light of dawn, the mansion burned to the ground before the rise. It's over. Oh? <laughs> Mm. So, who gets to read for the epilogue? Well, we stole Luke away from Kimei, so go Kimei. True. Mm, okay, I'll just I'll just read with my normal voice until until we know who's talking. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Works for me. Like the flames that engulfed the mansion that night, whispers quickly spread across Luxmore City after the incident. Officers who investigated it have simply deemed it an unfortunate accident. Regardless of the truth, Luke Wright files criminal charges against Brian Realty Corporation after, for undisclosed reasons to the public, forcing the latter to declare bankruptcy. A move that has merely stoked the rumors further. But, for those who still believe in the stories of the old and those who know the truth, it is but a testament to the curse and the secrecy Ermengarde Mansion has hidden for centuries. If there will come a time those will finally be revealed, only the ashes of the Northern Ruined Mansion know. However, on nights when the wind howls and thunder booms across the sky, some still claim hearing of voices where it once stood. Of cries and wails that fill the nights and desperate calls of help for anyone who dares listen. As for those who once tread its holes. Unable to settle their differences, Hannah Wright eventually files for a divorce from Luke Wright. For several months, they become the subject of gossips and the mass media in the city. In spite of this, the two have uncharacteristically remained tight-lipped on the circumstances of their separation. Though many assume it's the inevitable falling out stemming from the trouble during the couple's housewarming party. To everyone's surprise, however, Luke Wright quietly accepts the car's decision and disappears from the Evans Harris life without creating much fuss. Even after Hannah Evans has given birth to their children months later, the man is rarely seen around the family. Merely leaving his children paltry gifts in the mailbox whenever he's in town, never showing his face. With the right couple separation, also comes the right Evans conglomerate split up. Although the right enterprise still manages to do well in the business with Evans incorporated back as a competitor, Oil Tech Leak places its CEO and the company in their legal spotlights months later. This time, however, with the then Chief Inspector Harvey Lee's sudden absence, the businessman is unable to escape close scrutiny. In an investigation headed by LPD's Detective Inspector Ashton Frey, all of Wright Enterprises' illegal business their dealings within the past 10 years come to light. Although his involvement with other crimes is still being investigated, the disclosure has caused a huge outcry, especially from the city's business sector. Sued on multiple grounds, the company is ultimately forced to shut down. Oddly, when Luke Wright steps out of his office one last time, there's only a small smile on his face. To avoid public outrage, the once affluent businessman immediately leaves the city. Hmm. All of his bank accounts have been emptied, including his Luxor apartments, leaving not a single trace or clue where he might be hiding. 
the last anyone has seen of the man was on a flight bound for Ireland. Till this day, no one has heard from him. Not even Hannah Evans. Even his people from the old right enterprise, who have all been left to deal with the aftermath. Though over the past few months after the situation has calmed, some have made claims of spreading him flitting in and out of the city. If only to check on those he has left behind. Following the company split, Hannah Evans reestablishes Evans Incorporated, becoming its CEO like her late father has always wanted for her. You go, girl. Yep. <laughs> So a bit out of practice and doubted by many people at first, the Evans heroes quickly finds her bearings and props to be every bit as talented in the business as her parents. She's a little hard on her pen. Oh, yeah. Soon, under her management, the new Evans Incorporator flourishes, becoming one of the prime investment and finance companies in Luxmore City. Months after her recovery, Maria McCullough heads back to her homeland, ready to close a chapter of a past she has left hanging for so long. There, she visits Lorraine's grave, asking for forgiveness from the girl she once loved, something she has intentionally avoided for years. Although the terror of what she has witnessed inside the Ermengarde mansion still clings to her, she bravely chooses to move on from it. Turning a new leaf by focusing on a new branch of her interior design company and leaving her interior design company at Luxburn in the hands of her secretary instead. Although she never returns to the city after, she is frequently seen visiting to check on the people has become to check on the people she has become acquainted with in her years there. Having finally accepted herself, she won't deny she's in a happier place now. Oh yay! Yeah, baby! By some stroke of luck or an unfortunate circumstance of fate, Marianne encounters Luke Wright once again, almost a year after she returned home. She meets a man in the local marketplace, newly settled, fumbling, and confused. Although her opinion of him remains ambivalent, at best, she reluctantly offers help. Especially after seeing him stumble on his Gaelic more times than she deems acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, Luke, Luke looks good, like, more relaxed like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I've never Not been able to dig, man. like, the slicked back hair look on anyone. Yeah, True. no. Mm -hmm. Too much Draco Malfoy there. <laughs> yep. And it becomes a start. Not to a close friendship by any means. But perhaps something akin to it. And on better days, when virtual and scathing words don't get in the way, there's only the pleasant companionship one offers to the other. Casual visits to the other's home, sharing a bottle of wine or two, and simply talking about anything under the sun. A comfort after the things they can no longer have. Something they both eventually learn to appreciate with time. Despite making the Ireland branch of her interior design company her focus now, Marianne continues to cater to her most avid patrons in Luxburn, crested. And after her work on the Ermagan mansion, Hannah Evans has never trusted another to handle the design for any of the places she owns. For any of the places she owns, I guess. Mm -hmm. Upon moving back to Eva's mansion after her divorce, Maria's name is the first thing she calls and the woman is quick to fly back to the city as the socialite summon. Not only helping with the decorations of the old place, but also assisting with the renovations, much to Hannah's delight. Since then, the two women have kept a close friendship and business relationship. Friendship, quote unquote. Haha. <laughs> No homo, guys. <laughs> Just gal pals. Just gal pals doing gal pal things. Often, they can be seen going around town together when Marianne's in town, and the Evans Harris can be heard recommending the designer to her peers during parties. 
So maybe may, may go as far as to say Hannah Evans has confided with Marianne McCulloch during the tumultuous time of her divorce with Luke Wright. Whatever the case is, one can deny that both women have found a confident in the other. So precious. <laughs> With help from family and friends, Zachary still is soon able to open a photography studio of his own. <gasps> you go, boy! <laughs> Something he has only dreamed of having as a child. Although he still hopes to get back to making in the film someday, client work and small projects has kept him mostly busy. Hectic as it may be, he can only be glad for the amount of work pouring in. It has made moving on from the incident in the Ermagan Mansion easier, if not faster. But while there are still nightmares, with support from his family, his doctor, and his own drive, the dark images have finally turned into pleasant dreams. Oh yay! I'm so proud of you! <laughs> He's aware he won't ever truly forget, but he's no longer running away. At times, when he's not busy or after a hard day's work, he thinks there's another story for the big screen to be told in that. An idea he may soon turn into reality when his time affords. Unknown to many, Hannah Evans has also played a huge role in getting Zack's new studio up and running. <laughs> oh! Hey! Look at those adorable <laughs> little brats! <laughs> Look, he even has a blue cut! Oh, that poor kid's gonna get made fun of! I know, right? <laughs> but for all of the latter's efforts to try and find the woman, she insists keeping her investment a secret that she merely wishes to help out, having been impressed by his skills in the field during the brief time they worked together. Hannah is so sweet, I swear to God. I know. Mm -hmm. Holy God. Good egg. A working relationship that continues to this day, as he is the only photographer she seeks at every single event she hosts, whether it's a simple social gathering or a company party. Beyond work, they also remain close friends to this day, marked by frequent visits to his studio or casual talks over lunch or dinner. A friendship that seems... A friendship that only seems to grow in time especially after the businesswoman's separation from Luke Wright. Both have never directly answered what the real case may be. But it is clear the Evans Ferris trusts the photographer enough to put her children, who are especially fond of the man, in his care every time she, she leaves out of town. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, I'm soft. <laughs> In the months that follow, Rebecca Gales becomes a prominent researcher within the Luxor Meyer academic circle. Oh shit. Damn! Especially after writing what she has discovered about Ashland Village and the Ermengarde Mansion. Nice! With help from, from Professor Andrew Clark, she is soon able to secure funding to continue her research, presenting her findings yearly at local and international symposiums. Wow! Now at the tail end of her current study, she hopes to publish her first book, correcting all inaccuracies in the city's current history. A move supported by both colleagues, students, and friends alike. I really like the music, I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> so she knows she still has a long way to go before she can even begin to change people's minds about it. Professor Clark has sworn her as much. She perseveres. Doing it not for herself, but for the sake of a history the future generation must never forget. No matter how disturbing her experience with the course may have been, she remains the very world she has always been. Even after what she has seen, she continues to fret over people she cares about, sometimes much to their frustration and embarrassment. But if there's one thing that has shifted, it's her relationship with the people in their little group, particularly with Zachary Steele. In fact, on numerous occasions, she has been spotted dropping by his new studio, bringing the man food on date when his son would work. 
They also seem to have grown more comfortable around each other than before. Maybe it's born out of their shared experience. Or maybe the way they see each other has simply changed naturally due to the years they've known each other. Regardless of the ways, it's a change the man welcomes and appreciates. In turn, he strives to return her kind gestures whenever he can. For all the horrors they've seen, who would have thought something good would come of it? Mm. Oh. Oh. Things have inevitably become a strain between Ashton Frey and Rebecca Gales in the months following her confession. And with their lives getting busier, the two have eventually drifted apart. Although neither talks about it, and the teacher still strives to forget an old love, it's clear in Rebecca that there are still feelings left she couldn't let go of. If anything, however, this has only made it obvious how much has changed between them. And how much she has clung to the idea of Ashton from, the younger, from their younger days, the one that may not have been there in the first place. Merely an idea for a starry-eyed young girl. But if there will be a time she will be able to accept this, to move on from the hurt and repair an old friendship that has fallen into ruin, only she knows. Amidst her struggles, Rebecca finds an unlikely friend in Luke Wright. While he avoids the city like a plague nowadays after losing both his company and his family, he makes an effort to drop by from time to time. Mostly to visit his goddaughter, Kylie Suarez, Aww. the man is still won't admit it when asked. <laughs> Despite starting off on the wrong foot, Rebecca considers his presence a blessing now. A familiar face of the role she has seen. The same thing seems to go for the former businessman, confiding in the woman of his problems, petty or otherwise. At times, when their circumstances allow it, the two can be seen taking Kylie out to the local park, watching over the child, or sometimes simply engage in a mundane conversation. Enjoying each other's company and never talking about anything that hints of any misfortune. Whether this will ever grow into something more, only time will tell. Ah, With her newfound courage, Isabella Santos finally chooses to pursue what she really wants for herself. Having made enough to keep her family afloat for a few years, and with their blessing, she quits her job at Bryan Royalty Corporation and takes the scholarship offer from the local university. Ooh, a scholarship what offer! Say? Yeah! Though remarkably out of practice and ensure she'll be able to keep up by the time she returns to university, she finds her feet soon enough with help from people close to her. And with her confidence in her skills growing, so do the number of people recognizing her and her work. Yes! Go for it! It doesn't take long for several award-giving bodies to take notice of her. Ooh. Yes! Yay! For all her accomplishments, however, she has never truly forgotten what happened at the Ermengarde Mansion. The images still remain in her, and on particularly unpleasant nights, Terrors continue to visit her dreams. No. She knows those won't ever disappear from her life. It has become a part of her in the same way that has permanently taken from her. However, she's no longer afraid. And with a brave face, she carries on, earnestly wishing that someday she'll be able to paint brighter or be with thoughts on her canvas. An honest portrayal of life and hope and Mr. the fear. Shortly after accepting the scholarship grant from Luxmore University, Isabella moves from Salemwell residences in favor of staying in a dorm close to her campus. Although Rebecca Gale is quick to offer assistance for the move, she does admit she will be missing her neighbor for more than five years. When all is said and done, 
She has become fonder of the girl over the years, and with their shared experience over the course, they have only grown closer. Isabella leaves with a promise to visit every once in a while. And even though she still jokingly complains about Rebecca's bossy attitude, she confesses that she also misses the woman's fussing. After all, in a place miles away from her real family, Rebecca is still the closest thing she has to a sister. More than a year later, once everything in their respective lives have settled, Zachary Steele and Isabella Santos finally hold their first exhibit together. Ooh. Notice how in the front is Rebecca and Ashton? Prodi? I guess? A project that has been in the making for almost two years after the photographer casually brought it up to the old artist. While merely intended as a small event, it has been surprisingly attended by several, member of several members of Luxmore's upper class and art enthusiasts. I was trying to say, but I unfortunately muted my mic when I was saying it. It's not Ashton, because Ashton has longer hair now. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah, he's got, like, hair down to mid-back, much like all the other characters. Although only a few of the pieces have been meant for sale, the show has brought prominence to Zachary and Isabella's names in the series' art scene. It, it has since been followed by several other exhibits by the two, both in and out of the city. <laughs> They're so successful! <laughs> Yay! Currently, they are planning to hold their first show overseas. Oh, the little babies! <laughs> <laughs> Yet, even with this unexpected, overwhelming fame, friendship between the two has remained strong. Bears, after all, is a bond that goes beyond being mere partners in a small project. He's her family, as much as she is his. <laughs> oh! Uh, I have so much feelings. While she is aware that she, she still has plenty of ways to go, getting back to school has also opened a lot of opportunities for Isabella. At times, part-time work has started to come in droves and she is able to support herself financially through her art alone. Something she has only dreamed of as a child. And when clients are generous enough, she is able to send money back home well, despite her family's reassurances. One such client is Marianne McCullough of Interior Design Company, who frequently commissions her for murals after the woman has learned of her skill. But at times, she finds it difficult to keep up with her interior designer's standard for quality. It's mm -hmm. a job and a challenge she's only too happy to accept if it means doing what she loves. Following his, his <laughs> fuck, give me a second, I need water. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's a long one. I don't think we expected it to be this long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I'm bad. Like, <laughs> this is the length of two episodes right now. It's the two episode season finale. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's just that I ran out of water just before I started reading all this. So I haven't drank anything on all this, all oh, this okay. reading. And, I, and I'm dying. <laughs> it's okay, I was literally about to be like, so what the fuck happened to Ashton? I mean, did he just literally, like, leave all his friends because Isabella turned him down and he turned Becca down? And so it's just like, he's just like, you know what, I'm just gonna fucking leave because <laughs> I fucked all my relationships with the women in this group. <laughs> I mean, at least he's smart if he's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay. Following his success in bringing the Luxor firm case to a close, Ashton Frey receives a recommendation for transfer to Luxor Lear Agency against organized crimes. An endorsement eagerly backed by the newly appointed successor to the late Chief Inspector Lee, Abigail Harris. Oh, so... Fucking Chief Inspector Lee actually fucking died. From what? Mm -hmm. I don't know, they, they said at some point uh, that he was that, mysteriously missing, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, and no one knows where he is. Hmm. But usually I, you only refer to someone as the late so-and-so if they died. I guess the curse got to him at some point. <laughs> I mean, it's very likely. 
Knowing he'll have more resources, leeway, and a bigger chance at ultimately bringing Lock right to justice, Ashton Frey accepts. He still warns the people close to him against Wright and his associates, but only a friendly reminder now, more than anything. Though he does worry, he believes they are wise enough to know what they are doing and trust their judgement. For now, he has decided to leave the evidence and the law to speak for itself and take care of the matter once the proper time comes. <clears throat> Nowadays, police work and operations keep him busy. Sometimes taking him away from the city he grew up in for days on end. So more or less, Ashton's like, I'm just gonna drop it, but at some point I'm gonna kill Luke Wright. <laughs> <laughs> at some point in life. When the opportunity rises, I'm not hey. gonna say no. <laughs> hey, Ashton, that's called premeditated murder. Just FYI, it's illegal, <laughs> in case you're wondering. I don't know if you know that, considering that you're a cop and all. <laughs> a rare thing for him to enjoy once upon a time. Yet, this time, he never loses his drive. Simply growing more determined after having finally found a clear purpose, close to the rush and excitement he dreamed of as a child. Although Ashton still keeps mum about the specific details of his work, his experience with the cars has slowly taught him how to open up. If I can finally... <laughs> Especially to those who he knows that genuinely care for him. He still has a long way to go, he knows that, but for the sake of the people who are still with him. Those who have chosen to stay. He hopes that there will come a day when he no longer has to hide behind his own lies. A day when he, a day when he is no longer afraid of facing the truth in his words. <laughs> I'm so happy that they still have a bromance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so happy. When he stays off, Ashton is usually seen loitering around Zachary Steele's studio, either to, to help him out on one of his pet projects or exasperating the other man on purpose. He's good at that. How many locks has he broken to the studio? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Either or, it's mostly the latter. At certain times, he'll volunteer to model for one of the sex... The sex projects. <laughs> <laughs> In spite of the photographer's reassurances that it's not needed. Regardless, Ashton insists, before complaining how meticulous the whole process is hours later, to sex or an amusement. Though sometimes, they may get into small, trivial arguments, they have stayed cordial between the two. If anything, the ordeal they've both gone through has merely strengthened a friendship that a detective would not expect to find in anyone. <laughs> Aww. Good, good content. Yeah. Between the lingering trauma... Between the lingering trauma and their measly attempts at normalcy, it takes a few months for the Agwarners to finally lift for both Ashton Frey and Isabella Santos. Of several weeks trying to find their voice and remembering how to act around each other, despite enduring aff affections. But once the unis fades, there's only the usual banter and rapport to fall back on. The casual talk and the friendly jibes. And for the both of them, it's easy. Like breathing. Like coming home after another journey. A comfort in spite of the things they have gone through. Their days may still be filled with petty arguments and light teasing, but in the aftermath, when all has been said and done, something constant has already been forged between, between them. Between the them. Between the them. <laughs> the sack. <laughs> <laughs> A quiet, steadfast thing they can both hold on, onto as they both carry on. Dots. <laughs> and that is that oh boy so yeah. just to uh, quickly clarify something for the audience we didn't get anything <laughs> Jason and Mark 
Marnoka, Father Norman, Bartender G, Officer Lee. <laughs> <laughs> There yeah, we we didn't learn anything about the ghost, and honestly, I'm okay with that. Same, because if it means killing people, then no. <laughs> I like it. That everybody else has to go find out for themselves what the fucking deal with that ghost was. Yeah, I also really like the fact that even though we did not find anything out about the ghost, we still got resolution about the characters and their stories. And even though we didn't end up with anyone explicitly together, the endings are really good and fairly realistic. Mm -hmm. Like, I would have yeah. been kind of upset if it was like, Becca and Ashton remained great friends, because that just doesn't happen. Well, or like... I don't know, I was actually bothered by that. Like, it really bothers me that it's all, with, when it comes to um, Isabella and Becca, it's kind of like, you have to pick one or the other. You can't have a good relationship with both. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But, I mean, generally speaking, when you drop a bombshell of, I I love you, and the person says no, you don't stay friends after that. Which is funny, or, because it happened, it not only happened to Becca, but it also happened to Ashton from Bella. So, it's funny that Ashton and Bella are still friends. That's, yeah, what, that's, I'm, that's what I'm saying, yeah. The thing is that, it, uh, the difference there is that, from what I understood, or like what they implied, uh, they do have feelings for each other. It's just that Isabella is like not ready That's for true. a relationship. That's true. Whereas Becca has been, and the thing with Becca that they they say she still holds feelings. Like she she has been holding onto this crush for like how long? Seventy years? Yes. Something like that. Yeah. I like she had her this image like of Ashton in her mind, and she has not realized that. That's not the action. Yeah. That, that, so like that there is more di it's more difficult to Hey, is Coco on this list? <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, a list actually, for bankers. Yeah, it probably so might be. be on it. Ooh, let's look for Coco. <laughs> we might so have missed it already. Coco, oh, there's husband of goddess. I know I know her. <laughs> uh Also, a read of the sign. There it is, Pixel Coco! Yay! Yay! <laughs> 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 Nerds. Um, anyway. <laughs> I, yeah. I, even with the issues that the story has, I think it's a pretty well done story. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of bummed, again, not learning who the ghost was, but I think it's a story that kind of really opens itself up to replay it and not get bored replaying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say, I actually was entirely super fucking worried that we weren't going to get the epilogue. Because everything that I kind of found out led me to believe that you may not get the epilogue on every playthrough. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow. well, that kind of fucking sucks. Well, I guess that makes sense if you kill everyone. Yeah, if you kill everybody, <laughs> then you don't get the epilogue. Yeah. And that makes sense, because nobody else is alive. But yeah, I think yeah. it was. I think it was pretty good. I definitely mm -hmm. would be down to replay it. Um, you are terminated. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, no, I I got distracted because like there was one person who was just like, "Thank you so much for like letting me be the voice of uh, Andrew, Andrew Clark. Clark." I'm so happy. Excuse me, no Luke X Isabella. <laughs> the lady face is killing me. Hannah X Isabella, please. <laughs> But yeah, I think I think it was really good, and considering like it's a Kickstarter funded game, it did it's really good. Oh, there's more dots. Yeah. Oh, there's more dots. Teal, where are you, Teal? Oh shit! Teal, please. <laughs> She's here. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, damn! She's still- she's still here, too! I forgot. God damn! Oh, god. I remember there was, like, a warning for child death. <laughs> Help me! Please! <laughs> oh, yeah. There it goes. Oh, shit! Gets- Guess someone had to die. 
I forgot there are certain characters you can't save no matter what you do. And I completely forgot that that was one of the ones mentioned. Fuck. Shatter, Shatter Fairy Tale, Achievement Unlocked. That's the one I think that's like nobody's sure if you can save her. Oh boy. Oh boy. Thank. <laughs> Dear oh, hey. you, if you're reading this, this means you've finished playing the game in one way or another, and we thank you for the time you spent in playing the letter. This game is our passion project more than anything, and we sincerely hope we delivered in bringing you a one-of-a-kind visual novel experience. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! The, le <laughs> the letter is hopefully the first of many visual novels coming from us. If you liked what we did with this game and would like to support us, please consider donating to our Patreon account. You can also follow us on social media to get the latest updates. Our usual handle is Yang Yang Mobile. Thank you so much for everything. Let's talk soon. Love, Yang Yang Mobile team. I wonder though, like, if no one is sure if you can, if you can save Kylie. Well, so, like, maybe... The thing about it is this game has so many varying different paths that you can actually take, like, primarily because there's two different systems working. You have, of course, just like the regular story system, but also the relationship system yeah. affects how the story progresses. Mm -hmm. So even though, like, if you just want to go buy the book and look up a freaking guide just to get specific aspects of the story doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get the exact same stuff because i think you mentioned that your sib when they played this um that they actually got like a super happy ending with hannah and luke and like having their kids and stuff right <laughs> yeah like there's there's so many endings that it's the game is pretty long, and with there being so many paths, that it's kind of hard to verify if we, if the player base has unlocked all possibilities. Yeah. True. I mean, what, the game's only been out for like a year or something by this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we pretty much I, I want to play this. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll ask them, like, I don't want to know how, I just want to know if it's possible, like, to mm -hmm. save Kylie. Like I said, I just know that there's certain side characters that you can never save i um, really i really appreciate that the game is like oh by the way this yeah. is still a thing yeah it's like <laughs> by the way you may have think you got the happy ending but you didn't but you really yeah didn't. <laughs> it and definitely that's... implies i like it because it it makes you want to play the game through again to go oh shit the little kid but also yeah. it's kind of like there's a shitload of Japanese and Korean horror movies where you think the bad guy, the bad, the big bad evil supernatural has been defeated, and then they have like a crop up right at the end. Yeah. So yeah. I like that callback a lot. Yeah, it's true. Now, and I also wonder because, like, in the case that it's not possible to skip that ending, it would mean that maybe there could be like a like second a game. game. Yeah. yeah, that's another option there. Also. I personally am curious as to whether this game learned from the mistakes that 999 did when it first came out, um, which is since you have a story, you have a story with branching storylines, does it just allow you to go straight to the parts which you make decisions and change the decision just to go down that path, or do you have to replay the whole fucking entire thing all over again? <laughs> And I guess it's something I'll have to find out when I play through the game on my own time, because... The other thing that I want to know, yeah. too, is what happened to Johans? He's uh, probably uh, dead. No, he's yeah. like, I'm like, wondering if that's, like, if we accidentally forgot that part. Like, mm. like in play playing it. find out. Yeah, I guess so. Good point. <laughs> like, buttons, you can't tell me no spoilers and then be like, but I want spoilers. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm more like, was that a writing Rhetorical. oversight in the story yeah. or not? Uh, it is interesting that it was never mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of left up to ambiguity in this particular storyline. And we, to... didn't, we didn't kill anyone, guys. Yeah, we did. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as... uh. You know, unavoidable, or probably. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 well, as, as far as, as the main go. cast goes, we didn't kill anyone. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. More than point. No, we came and close I genuinely various did. times. <laughs> God, we did. I was genuinely like, when we entered loose chapter, I was genuinely worried because at that point I didn't know how shit went down, and I'm like, I saw 
like a briefest spoiler that's just like, yeah, if Hannah and Luke's relationship is really bad, bad things happen. It's like, uh oh. <laughs> Uh oh, are you serious? Is this what's happening now? Okay, well, I'm. Um, this is the choice we made. We're going with it. I don't care. Oh boy. But like, again, that's interesting. That like your your relationship cha choices change the story. So yeah, that's really good. And I do like that, and it means that there is various different stories you can get. Mm-hmm. Well, with that, we will finally bring this Let's Play to a close. Thank Woo! you, Buttons and Leafly, for joining us on this. It has been uh, quite the it's wild ride. It's been a year. It's been <laughs> great. <laughs> now we can finally move on, Coco. Pyre. get her Sundays back. <laughs> now you guys can move on to the letter two. Uh, <laughs> electric electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye! Bye. Bye.